absolutely massive player returning to Ole Miss in 2024. We'll tell you all about it here. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, and I'm likely the only person that you know and will hear from today that has worked in the Manning Center at Ole Miss and had a job in the national media at Yahoo Sports. Thank you very much for joining us. Today on the show, we talk about how Ole Miss just got their second most valuable piece to return in 2024, and Walker Jones also put out this cryptic tweet hinting at maybe four more, or maybe he's just really excited about that one. We'll talk about that as well. As I mentioned, I'm Stephen Willis, and this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast, your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. We're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day, and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. Visit FanDuel.com right now to get started. Anyway, as I mentioned again, I'm Stephen Willis, and thank you for joining the Lockdown Ole Miss podcast. And J.J. Pegues is coming back in 2024. This is a major piece. J.J. Pegues is likely better than anybody that you can get in the transfer portal. J.J. Pegues is going to be better than anybody that you can recruit. J.J. Pegues is going to be a better option starting at defensive tackle than any player that was available to Ole Miss. So getting him back is probably one of the best transfer portal additions that Ole Miss could make. J.J. Pegues last year ended up with 40 tackles, three and a half sacks, Good player. He did some offensive short yardage work. He's His mobility cannot be understated. He's a hometown guy from Oxford, Mississippi, and a really, really good football player. I like the idea that J.J. Pegues is going to come back, and if you look at Ole Miss's football roster, there's not a whole lot of people that have to leave at the defensive line. And, and the defensive front for Ole Miss was actually pretty good. They ended up in the 50s in rush defense, which I know – is not exactly where you want to end up, but he was part of a unit that held um, teams almost was 35th in scoring defense. We talked about before this season how this team was going to be clunky on defense, but they were going to be good in certain areas. This team was pretty good in scoring defense. This pretty team was pretty good at creating explosives. Yes, the other team could get rolling and could absolutely um, outclass and outtalent you, but they had to get past the scheme first. You had the talent, have the talent to negate what Pete Golding was doing defensively. And, you know, I think Ole Miss gave up about 21 points a game, which, remember, we're, we're five years past Wesley McGriff giving up over 35 points a game, even to FCS teams, to where you're like, okay, 31's a good defensive performance. I just want to give the defense kudos. Now we're at the point where, Six teams got about 300 total yards in a game out of 12. Pete Golding feasted on bad offenses all year. And in scoring offenses, they he didn't give him many points. Uh, and, you know, you put Ole Miss. Ole Miss is about three or four below Texas A&M in scoring defenses. Texas A&M had the best defense in the conference. So getting pieces off of that defensive unit is not a bad thing. JJ Pegues is a NFL level 3 technique. Another year playing that position is going to help him out greatly. You have Akello Stone that plays over there. You have Jamarius Brown. Everybody's going to forget about Jamarius Brown, but I'm expecting him to take a year two jump and he's going to play a good bit in my opinion. He might be the player that backs up JJ Pegues to where you do like a mentorship type situation, but expect Jamarius Brown to play quite a bit, but nose tackle, you have Xavier Harris, and potentially, if he wants to, Josh Harris can come back, although he's not one of the top five players that Ole Miss must bring back, but he's available at nose guard to where Ole Miss has two 350-pound nose guards in the middle of the field, and Xavier Harris, everybody knows that. I call him the dancing bear, essentially, as agile as he is and as big as he is. The defensive line is going to be in decent shape, especially 
with this bumper crop of recruits that are coming in. And some of those players are going to play. And some of those players are going to develop. But like Camarion Franklin, I'm expecting him to play. Cam Beavers, I'm expecting him on the field. The players like that, I'm expecting some semblance of a contribution from them. Now, it might not. It might be a special teams type thing like um, Jamarius Brown went through. But I'm expecting that stuff um, to manifest itself. But J.J. Pegues coming back gives you an extra level of security because he's better than anybody that you can bring in. As far as right now, year one, this 2024 season that Ole Miss is trying to make the playoff, he is the best option that is out there in the transfer portal and in recruiting. Ole Miss got better by re-signing J.J. Pegues. And there's probably five players that I would consider as um, potential must signings for Ole Miss for the 2024 football season. And this is going to be important that you get them re-signed, but also that you don't overspend. And there's a certain level where positionary positions hit their caps, so to speak. We'll talk about that in the next segment as well. But J.J. Pegues coming back, this is a major, major deal for Ole Miss football. Him manning three technique, doing the things he needs to do. The schedule is going to get a little bit easier next year. Um, I wish it would have gotten easier this year, but it's going to get a little bit easier next year. You got Georgia at home, no Alabama. You go to LSU, um, and that's essentially it. You have a game against South Carolina. You have a game against Kentucky. Um, Mississippi State's on the schedule. You lose Vanderbilt, but you go to Florida. Um, who else is on there? Arkansas is on there as well. Oklahoma is on there. Oklahoma is coming to Oxford. It, it, uh, like I said, it's not going to be easy. No team in the SEC is going to have an easy road, but it's going to be manageable. If Ole Miss can go 10-2 and two against the schedule that they just had, next year's schedule shouldn't scare anybody. And I question anybody that it does scare, honestly. But J.J. McGee's coming back and the defensive line, getting that anchor. Now we can concentrate on retention on the defensive line, bring making sure those defensive linemen make it to campus and find transfer portal linebackers. That's the key, I think. Transfer portal linebackers are going to be a major key for Ole Miss's defense. We'll talk about that next week. But I do think that's going to be a major key for this defense. That and the safety positions. Maybe we'll give our top five when we come back of players that I want Ole Miss to re-sign and, and players that I think that we need to look at re-signing. And if we can do that, we'll be, we'll be honestly be pretty good and we'll be good to go. So anyway, thank you very much for tuning into the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. We are just getting started. Thank you for making it the first listen of the day. Players on our wish list to return with portal opening Monday coming right around the corner. Stick around. As the weather gets colder, the NFL offers stay hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 if your team wins. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is so easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. Also, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, really interesting stuff. And I'm going to put this tweet up right here. This is from Walker Jones, who is the head of the Grove Collective at Ole Miss, and they do this from time to time. But Walker Jones put this tweet out yesterday, right before J.J. Piggies was announced as return. In my opinion, this could mean two things. This looks intentional, okay? So he could be really excited and putting five um, sharks about J.J. Piggies. And, and I'm admitting that that's a possibility, but that's not traditionally 
how they do this. They do this, each shark indicating a player. And this is in, this is insinuating a top five list of players that could be returning for a senior type year. And it got me thinking, who would be the players that I would like to see Ole Miss go after? Who would be the players that I think would benefit Ole Miss football the most when you take into account how much they produce, how much they do, how good they are, and how much they already make and how much it would make to keep, cost to keep them, okay? And I think that's pretty important. Number one on the list is going to be Jackson Dart. And I think Jackson Dart's going to come back, and Jackson Dart has deserved the right to make that decision himself, okay? He's earned that right. Jackson Dart needs to be the last person that announces he's staying, if he's staying. If he's not, you have Walker Howard, and you're probably in good shape that way anyway. But you look at that, the number one player that Ole Miss fans should want to be reta retained for 2024 is Jackson Dart. He's, abs he's the emotional leader of this team. He's pretty much everything to this ball club, and he has built himself quite a reputation amongst the Ole Miss um, fan communities. There are some that don't like the fact that he doesn't play like Eli Manning, but, I mean, it kind of is what it is. Number two was J.J. Pegues. He's back. I think that was the number two player that Ole Miss needed to get. And that one is a stabilizing force for the defensive front. You have talent coming in recruiting-wise. You have talent being retained. All of a sudden, you're good to go on that defensive line. Now, the defensive line is probably going to be in better shape than Ole Miss has ever had it. The defensive line is where we need it to be. Now, there's still some growing to do. There's still some things they need to get done. But you have the players in place to, to grow up fairly rapidly, especially when you look at William Eccles and Cam Beavers and Camarion Franklin and Jeffrey Rush and those guys coming in and adding to the depth. The defensive line is going to be fine. Ole Miss needs to find a linebacker. So, Obviously, you want to retain Santarian, but I'm not going to put um, Santarian in this category of the top five of retaining. You you want Santarian back, okay? Don't get me wrong. Um, but he's not going to be in the top five. I think Ole Miss is going to be shopping in the transfer portal for linebackers. You'll see that as well. Also, you're going to have TJ Dudley, who Ole Miss got on the portal um, last year. And obviously, you have Perkins, but building depth in that linebacker room is going to make the defense a little bit better. So I think that Ole Miss is going to be shopping at linebacker in the transfer portal. Number three on the list is Trey Harris. Ole Miss needs to find a way to bring Trey Harris back. Trey Harris is potentially the best wide receiver in the Southeastern Conference. He's a matchup problem. He He's just a dude. He just is. Ole Miss is this is probably going to be the hardest one to retain because he is probably a second round type NFL pick right now. I have it on fairly decent authority. He's 50 50. He's probably he might go pro, he might come back to college, but Ole Miss has a shot, is my point. I think Trey Harris, Ole Miss needs to work to retrain, retain him because you're going to have potentially a situation to where if Ole Miss can get a commitment from Deion Smith, you have Deion Smith on one side, Trey Harris on the other, and then you have a slot receiver that's doing all, all kinds of neat things. The wide receiver units have has a chance to get really, really good. And there's other players that might enter the portal shortly, like a Will Shepard or somebody like that, that Ole Miss probably also needs to keep tabs on. But if you can re-sign Trey Harris, not, not for an exorbitant amount of money, like I said, you need to draw that line, and anything below it, you need to be willing to do it, and anything above it, you need to be willing to let them walk, no matter who they are on this roster, um, because it is important to be a better football team than to have fan favorites um, around. 2024 playoff is the most important, but the number three player behind Jackson Dart, J.J. Pegues, is um, Trey Harris. Number four, Caden Priestcorn. You need to find a way. Caden Priest Corn is an adult. He has a kid. He probably is looking to get paid. He is the one that you're probably going to have to open up your checkbook for. But the value that he, Caden provides your team blocking and the way the run, def, run offense looks different with him in the game and his work that he put on the field as a receiver, I think he is a most important sign 
for Ole Miss um, for 2024. Either that or a tight end that can give you something very similar. Now, the tight end is not an expensive position in the portal. You'll probably be able to find somebody that can do what you want to do, but somebody needs to be found that can do what Caden Prescorn can do. And right now, the best way to handle that is to have Caden Prescorn, if that makes sense. And the number five player, and this is going to sound weird because um, everybody's going to say, hey, you have not said Quinshawn Judkins, and I love Quinshawn Judkins. But number five on the list is John Saunders. The reason I bring that up, John Saunders played a position on the field that was completely noticeable when he messed up. How often did you notice John Saunders this season? He just did his job. A little slot corner, did some stuff, the physicality matching up, did some work in the run game. John Saunders played a really good year of football at Ole Miss. And, you know, it might not be that much to bring him back, but him, with him and potentially Trey Washington and whoever else, the, the middle part of the secondary is going to be okay moving forward. But those are the top five players that I think Ole Miss needs to look at as retention. Now, I love Quinshawn Judkins, okay? Quinshawn Judkins against Mississippi State, it was, it was like the second coming Earl Campbell that night. The problem that I have with Quinshawn Judkins is not necessarily a problem with Quinshawn Judkins. It's the fact that he's the highest paid player on the team and he's a running back. I honestly think that if Quinshawn Judkins or Ulysses Bentley or even Kedrick Riscano was playing running back, there would be some level of effectiveness that happened. Ole Miss was able to run the ball before Quinshawn Jenkins, and I think they would be will be able to after. Now, Quinshawn is so good, he is a fan-type favorite. And the reason I bring it up this way is so those emotional heartstrings doesn't necessarily take over. Now, if Quinshawn wants to come back, we would love to have him back. And he probably deserves a little bit of a pay bump. But you cannot break the bank at the detriment of other positions of need for running back. You can't. You have to be willing to wet, let Quinshawn walk if he wants to walk. If he gets that $2 million offer at Texas or somewhere like that, you can't get in that bidding, bidding war because that will more impactfully hurt Ole Miss's NIL um, situation than other positions. Like I said, Quinshawn's doing great stuff right now. He's paying, making good money. He's the highest paid person on the team. I think that probably needs to be good enough, is my opinion there. Because Riscano and whoever gets signed in and running back, I think Ole Miss is going to be fine. Ole Miss is going to be fine. So we will see. But the top five players, those are the top five players I'd like to see Ole Miss retain to bring back. And I also didn't mention Jordan Watkins. I'd love to have him back as well. I think he's a terrific slot receiver. Um, him and Caden Lee, who got some reps towards the end of the season, um, fantastic. I don't think Dayton Wade is going to come back, but I'd love to have him back in Oxford. Offensively, they are skill pieces all over the field that kind of puts me in the right mindset. It's like, hey, this offense is going to be ready to go in year three, um, and they just have to be willing to do it. And we'll see exactly what happens as well. Anyway, thank you for listening and watching the Locked On Ole Miss podcast and making it your first listen of the day. Um, still more to come as we talk Ole Miss, Memphis, sold out pavilion on Saturday. We're talking a little college basketball right after this. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen of the day and shout out to every dayers. Locked On has launched a first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering the league every day. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to that first ever national sports 24-7 stream channel. Be part of History. All right. Ole Miss and Memphis plays tomorrow, which is Saturday, at about 1 o'clock Central, 2 o'clock Eastern. That is before the SEC championship game. So that, that is probably good news for people that live in, uh, that want to watch both. 
might miss a little bit of the Big 12 championship game as championship Saturday is going to be a lot of fun as well. Also, at before we get started, the American Conference Championship game will be going on the same time as the SEC Championship game, uh, and that will um, involve the Tulane Green Wave playing the SMU Mustang, Mustangs. Ole Miss needs Tulane to win. <clears throat> That's where we are there. Ole Miss needs Tulane to win. But while this is going on, Chris Beard's quietly 6-0. And Tuesday night, they did an absolute boat race of the North Carolina State Wolfback in the ACC-SEC Challenge. Or SEC-ACC Challenge. I forget how they pronounce it and which one goes, but that that that's the way, way it is. And, you know, Jamin Brakefield kind of are, broke out. We talked about early in the season um, that he was just trying too hard. He was trying too hard. And... If you heard Tim Thomas talking about how proud we are that Brakefield was able to get going, and this team looks completely different when Brakefield goes. Almost looked like a really well-coached basketball team Tuesday night. They made shots. They did what they need to do. Their spacing was good. Um, you looked at their effort on defense. It was fantastic. They looked like a, honestly, what we thought a Chris Beard team would look like when he got the Ole job. When he got that job, we assumed that Ole Miss would be able to put a good product on the floor and eventually the pavilion would be sold out. Well, the first sellout of the Chris Beard era is Saturday against the Memphis Tigers. And Memphis is good. Memphis has a win over Arkansas. They have a win over Missouri. Um, They have a win over Michigan. They are a good basketball team. There's no way to get around that. And this is a game that Ole Miss probably isn't expected to win, but this is a free shot. You're going to have an energized arena. You're going to have a completely fired up team, and you're going to have Musa Cisse available for the first time, who got his waiver um, after six games into the season. He's going to be able to play. We're still waiting on Brandon Murray um, and seeing how that's going to go. But Cisse can play, which is going to provide a little bit of front court depth behind Jamar, uh, Jamar and Sharp. When you look at this Ole Miss basketball team, with the addition of Cissé, it takes another step in the direction where we want it to go. Like I said, eventually Ole Miss is going to lose the basketball game. That's going to happen. I, I, you, can, you can absolutely take that to the bank. And you look at this tweet from Brad Logan talking about the pavilion being sold out for Saturday and the game time and all of that stuff. But this Ole Miss team took a step or two against NC State even before CSA. With the addition of CSA, if that level continues that ascendancy, by the time they get to SEC play, this is going to be a pretty good basketball team. I'm not saying they're going to be Kentucky good. I'm not saying they're going to be Arkansas good. I'm saying they're going to be NCAA tournament type good if this ascendancy keeps happening. Because if you go back and remember what it looked like when you watched Ole Miss play Alabama State, go back and remember what that looked like. Go back and remember how you felt those first couple of games, those buzzer beaters in the tad pad um, against Sam Houston, squeaking by Temple. Remember remember how you felt watching those games. You're like, man, okay, this is going to be fun. We're going to need to get to this level, but how do we do that? Is obviously, it's going to be a slower build than I thought it was going to be. How do we get there? And then against NCA State, it just clicked. And oftentimes, whenever a new coach comes in, you have a situation to where you have spurts of good basketball where you can see it. Against Alabama State, even, there were spurts. There was two or three minutes to where you're like, okay, this is how it's supposed to look. And then it turned into six minutes, and then it turned into eight minutes, and then it turned into 10 minutes. And against NC NC State, it was like 35 minutes. And that has to be a good feeling for the confidence of a group of players that is only going to get reinforcements from here. Musa Cisse is going to be on the floor the rest of the year. All of a sudden, Ole Miss has two seven-footers they can go to. Whenever one gets tired and needs a break, you can put the other one in. And you have shot blocking, you have rim protection, you have all of that stuff in this age, and you can put people out on the perimeter that can guard. 
And you have a team that defensively, because of that, you're going to be in every game. Honestly, it's probably no different than when Rod, Rob Evans was coaching at Ole Miss. They defend it so hard, eventually the offense had to catch up. And you're kind of starting to see that happen. Now, I'm not saying that it's going to happen overnight. I'm even, not even going to say that Ole Miss is going to make the NCAA tournament this year because who knows once we get into SEC play. Ken Palm does not like this Ole Miss team, but other metrics do like this Ole Miss team. So I, I do not know. I do know what I see, and I do know what I how I feel when I see it. And what I see is a team that is quickly gelling, quickly understanding how Chris Beard wants to play. And because of it, they can look good at times. Not just, not just okay, not just confident, not just competent. They can look good. And because of that, the longer that stretch goes out on and the more consistent they can get, the better this basketball team can be. Like I said, we're still waiting on the waiver from Brandon Murray. And once he gets in there, if he gets his waiver, it's Katie bar the door a little bit. But you can see this basketball team playing at another level. And they get another opportunity with a sold-out pavilion Saturday at 1 o'clock Central Time against the Memphis Tigers in a big game. And if Ole Miss can get past Miss Memphis, they have a chance to go undefeated um, through non-con. And if that happens, man, they're sitting pretty. They're playing with house money at that point. But get through Memphis, indeed. So it should be really interesting to see what, exactly what happens. Um, if the game is sold out, if you want tickets, go to the gametime.co webpage or the Game Time app, and you can get a $20 discount with Locked On College as the promo code um in there you can get in with that you probably should get you probably can get into the game fairly well anyway thanks for making the locked on Ole Miss podcast your first listen every dayers will know by monday where we're going bowling and the transfer portal will be open for business for your second listen locked on has launched its first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on youtube locked on sports today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. For your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first national sports 24-7 stream channel. For those on you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Anyway, hotty toddy.